amazing. You know those TikToks where the girls like flip their hair over and grab it and then. Have you seen those? Uh -huh. They're entertaining. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, wait. I don't, don't. No, no, no. No guns. finger guns. No finger guns. God, I'm gonna put the. <laughs> I'm put those away. <laughs> Get your points out now. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Jesus. This is my wife, Christina, with a K. Welcome to my channel, uh, 4i Fitness. Uh, I'm starting this channel to really document my journey from these last couple years. I have been really tough. I had a couple surgeries. I had diverticulitis. Um, I was as weak as I've ever been in my life. Better now to where I've actually started to get back into it. I'm starting to work out again and I want to get in the best shape I've ever been in. I'm about to hit a big milestone. I'm gonna hit 40 years old. Um, the whole point of this for me is to hold myself accountable. Um, and at the end of the day, like if anybody can relate with having to deal with the two surgeries back to back and to be able to feel healthy again and seeing that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, then stick around. You might, you might see something you like. We're going to talk about today while we wrap these presents, how it all started. Like Jeez. just, you know, what happened, you know? I was just at work one day and everything was fine. And then I went on lunch, had some food, came back, started working. And then all of a sudden I'm not feeling good. I'm stuck in the bathroom. I ended up calling her and telling yeah. her I wasn't feeling good because I started feeling so cold and I had to like, I wore my jacket, I wore my hoodie on. I had, I was completely bundled up and I was shivering cold. Yeah, and at the time I was only his girlfriend and that's a good girlfriend should. I said, go get a thermometer, check your time, make sure you're not dying. I mean, he was, but we didn't know Literally. at the time. <laughs> I took my temp, uh, took my temperature like, every 30 minutes. I just kept climbing and climbing until I finally just called my boss and I told him how I felt and I needed to go home. I mean, all of his symptoms, they were just like flu-like. So all we did to treat it, we just got like flu medicine and we're like, Stay in bed, fluids. Chicken his, his, all yeah, his fever would break periodically, but then it would just shoot right back up and it would get stronger at each wave. And having to go to the restroom like. was like terrible after a while. It just became like I was pooping sandpaper. All these symptoms started December 4th and um, it was about two days in on December 6th that I had woken up uh, to get ready for work and everything, and he was just in a fetal position um, on the bathroom floor, just dying. And he was just, you know, telling me to go to work. And he was like, I'm fine, I'm fine. And I was like, no, um, we're going to the hospital. By the time I was going into the hospital, I remember walking into the emergency room, I was just, hobbling over while she went over and handled paperwork. I took this into the back. Um, they pulled me away. They sent her into a room and they started doing tests. And they started to give me morphine. And when they gave me morphine, <laughs> it was all right. <laughs> but no, it wasn't because <laughs> the doctor proceeded to tell me that he had to go into emergency surgery and I had taken him to a smaller hospital and they didn't have the proper, um, thank you. They didn't have the proper equipment to do the surgery. So they had to transport uh, him to a bigger hospital that could do it. And this guy is like, oh, do we do a strip there? Yeah, like, one, I, was, I was very calm. And I was just like, as he was saying this to me, I look over to her and she's like, like literally got hit by a car or something yeah, like the doctor of course is like uh no you can't drive we are taking you by ambulance she's gonna drive herself there i got to the hospital the emergency room at 10 a.m 
you got me into surgery by two o'clock. Yeah, I stayed at the hospital the whole time while I was in surgery. His cousin came and kept me company for a little bit. Worse was yet to come for me. Yeah. They have to remove a piece of the colon, the infected part out. And since that part is being removed and there's the infection, the infection needs time to heal before it can be used as a bowel again. And so the healthy part of his bowel had to be redirected to his stomach so that he could have his bowel movements while his lower col the uh, butt part was healing and got all the infection out and sure. um, um yeah i mean it's all healed now <laughs> but yeah so it was coming out of here and they ripped me open from here all down to the top of my pubic bone and i was completely cut my belly button is shot it's not it's not a real belly, not a button. belly button they anymore. created it because they had to cut him open this was where the stoma was mm -hmm. i honestly for the life of me i thought i was going to be stuck like that forever to a croton aftercare with no insurance to have to go through all of December into January with no insurance and to have to have an ostomy bag on my stomach that needs to be changed. It happens automatically. It, it does it on its own and you can't stop it. I can't. Okay, hold on. I got to hold it. Yeah, because no. if you didn't know, the muscles that hold everything in and all of that, it's in your butt. <laughs> so what is here is just going to poop. It's just going to come out. When you put a bag on, for the people that do know, like you have a ring that goes onto it that's like extra sticky and it's kind of like a gasket to where it keeps it from leaking out. I have this other bag that goes on top of that. And that that little ring alone, it, it was horrible. It's so expensive. And also he needed like, you had to have powder stuff to put around yeah. the soma. The powder so that was like hard to find. It was so hard to find because it keeps it sticky and it doesn't let the stuff flow out and destroy it. Prevents it prevents the rashes. It's yeah, it prevents the rashes. Like, horrible. It's insane. Like, to, 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 <laughs> so there's a special clinic that you that we I was going to and it was up in Vegas, in Vegas, it was up in the north side of town. This lady that worked there, I went in there and I went to buy it and then that's when I first found out the price of it and I was how often it's needed and just like how much it was gonna be costing. I had that that moment right there in front of her. And she told me to come back at, um, at like the next day around five o'clock and um, I came and I gave her money directly. She gave me an incredible amount and she ended up giving me way more than what she said she was gonna give me but all, all that medical equipment was nuts it was very frustrating there was a lot of times to where i was desperate and thought that my life was gonna be like that all the time and when i did get my insurance even having all the proper things it's just such a i don't wish that on anybody it's crazy to think that i only had it the the actual bag for four months because it was from december till april and the, the recovery on the second one was better but uh i i mean they pulled my intestine away from here so there was an empty stoma and i remember this that they pulled the gauze out and it was it just kept coming out because they they packed it to keep it from bleeding and it was an open wound and they, the way they let this heal was as an open wound. I was, I think I weighed as much as 260, 265, right in that range. And I had a much bigger belly and it was very, it was very deep. He has to stick to a certain type of diet so that this doesn't happen again and you know the doctors didn't know why it happened in the first place so i'm really susceptible to hernias and mm -hmm. i remember i couldn't pick up our because we have the our water jugs for the house and i couldn't pick up the water jug we used to like going on hikes we used to be 
at the beach. We live in California, so it was always a. Uh, we were always very active and. It was go always from, an adventure. To be active, to just like nothing. That was the biggest I've ever seen him. Like he gained a lot of weight, lost a lot of muscle. To this day, I still get PTSD. If I have a stomach ache of any kind, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> it's uh, almost 2023 and that happened back in 2018. <laughs> I'm at my doorstep every day. The doc, you know, he has to eat right because he is missing part of his colon and his body doesn't digest like ours do. Um, he will have to go to the restroom faster. When I gotta go, I gotta go. Yeah. I'm 39 years old and I'm about to be 40, but damn it, I don't feel old. I feel very young. My body's finally starting to feel better. Um, I've always had psoriatic arthritis on top of that because I have psoriasis and uh, I finally got approved for Humira, which I've been able to take Humira, which has been helping my joints and like before I used to get a lot of pain from working out in my joints and everything like that and right now I'm actually just really getting my health in order to where I want to be in the best shape I've ever been and I want to see what I can do. I want to see how I can make it happen. We have, we are, we're going to have a big year coming up. We're going to be going to EDC and, uh, EDC. I want to, you know, be very comfortable and be able to be all over that speedway and not have to worry about slowing down and, you know, just be out there and having fun. I started two months a uh, month ago two months ago two months ago two months ago mm -hmm. it was really more just to feel out because i started taking humera and since i started taking humera i started feeling better and i noticed that we started going on our walks that we normally go on to walk the dogs and stuff like that my knees weren't hurting when i was doing you know our normal walk so um i decided to try to work out on my own just to see how i felt recovery wise and I worked out and, you know, I didn't, obviously I was sore and it was like hard to catch my breath, but um, it didn't hurt like it hurt before. And so therefore I started to pick it up and I started doing a couple of days and then um, I felt recovery was working out properly. And so therefore I picked it up to three days a week and I'm really too worried about the scale because I do want to like get some muscle. But I do want to, like, I do want to just, I just want to feel good. I think the scale took the biggest factor from when you were at your biggest in 2019. Yeah. I mean, to be at 260 to come down to here, it is wild with mm -hmm. just the eating. It's one of those things to where it's like, I got to change it at some point and that some point is now. And so therefore, again, that's why I'm starting the 4i Fitness. So that way I can hold myself accountable and... You know, really taking charge of uh, 2023. I'm gonna try to make it happen. We are gonna make it happen. So um, I'm done wrapping presents. They're all done. Uh, so if you enjoyed our little story and you wanna watch this guy really get in shape, little reach his goals, and I'm so proud. You should um, you should like and comment and um, subscribe. Yeah, because totally he's pretty great. <laughs> pretty awesome i think so i'm weird but like i'm not super weird you know you get used to it <laughs> <laughs> but yeah uh thank you for watching call huh, jesus yes stick around be more to come my phone said it's time to fred <laughs>